my name is Green, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. As you can see in front of me, and from the title and thumbnail of this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a realistic street in Minecraft. So, what I've got to show you today is three examples. So, I've got this grey building here with a couple of variants on them, a sandstone building, and a red brick building. And when combined together, they look like a realistic early 20th century street and I absolutely love this style. Now, this is a style that I haven't really covered before except for in my evolution series. So, this video is going to be a bit longer and it's going to take a bit more explaining than perhaps normal, but I will take you through the theory, the techniques and these individual designs so that you will be able to make any kind of building like these. And hopefully, by the end of it, you'll also be able to build in this style and create your own 19th or 20th century cities or houses or streets or whatever you're trying to make. And by the end of it, hopefully, you'll be able to make a proper looking street like this with both sides complete with all the little details and trees and everything that you need in them. Each house has its own little flair, a bit of distinguishing factor, but making these buildings is actually quite easy, surprisingly easy. And before I go into the detailed sort of block for block time-lapse tutorial, I want to show you the theory and explain how these buildings work and why they look so nice. So, let's head over to an example like this one. Now, obviously, I've not detailed this, I've not stylized it, it's not using a particular palette. This is literally just to show you the three main parts, because if you have this in mind when we're doing this tutorial and when you're making your ones, you will really come to grips with this house design. So, there are three main parts to the building and then a few optional bits as well. Uh, the bottom is the foundation. This bit here is always one block forward, and how high it goes is up to you. Sometimes you might want to have a lower foundation, and this just helps the building look like it's really sitting on something solid. You could have this go all the way above the door line, maybe even incorporate some windows. It's up to you, but you definitely want a baseline. The second part is the wall itself. Now this includes the doors and many repeated patterns of windows as you can see here. Obviously there's no details here, these are just plain windows. But one of the biggest features is that it is very tall. This building type would not work so well if your windows were only 2x2. Two two. I recommend going 4, 5 tall on your windows so that you really get a sense of grandeur on these buildings. They're not particularly wide, you know, roughly between 15 and 20 blocks, but they're not particularly wide, they're nice and tall. These really do imitate real life. And then of course, the third part, which is very important, but the most forgettable part, is the lip at the top of the building. Now, as you can see, this one goes two blocks over the edge, so it covers over the top of the base layer, and then a little bit more. Now this overhang here really sort of sets this apart, so when I look up, I'm looking in at the building, and then this lip here just focuses my eyes downwards into it. It's just a really nice bit of decoration. Those are the three main parts. Now obviously after that, you can take the optional route of having a roof on the top, no problem. But that is, again, optional. And that is basically the example of the building. That is roughly every single one of our buildings. It's how it works. So with that in mind, we can now dive into the tutorial of this and really get to grips with it and start making a few examples with the aim that you'll be able to make pretty much any real life building from London or any 20th century city like New York and be able to replicate it in Minecraft and create your own city streets. Okay, let's begin. We're gonna start off by making the gray townhouse from right at the start. 15 blocks long along with stone brick and either side place some light gray concrete, 28 blocks tall. But I want to emphasize that you can use different dimensions to me. This is just for those of you that really want to replicate it block for block. That's absolutely fine. And I also want to stress that you can use a different palette as well. You don't need to use stone brick and you don't need to use concrete if you don't want to. 
this is just what I chose. So either side you need to put some stone brick towers up to that 28 block mark and then down the center you want to put another tower so that we've got three in total. So it should look like that, it's a fairly easy start and this is a good way to start any one of these townhouses just starting with the frame of the front. At the bottom, we're now going to start working out what the repeated pattern is going to be. I started filling in the space with some stone and then having a few bricks that are protruding inwards to it. And this kind of helps highlight where the window is going to be and I've left a space for it. But when you get to the top of your window, you need to kind of have a dividing sector between window one and window two and so on and so forth. But once we have this pattern, we will be able to repeat it. So I got some stone brick staircase and placed it just along the top of the window and then placed a slab on the top. That creates a quarter of a block line and then I put some stone brick a block behind and created another line that was slightly deeper. This created two lines that were one smaller than the other and this is going to help divide. You could just have one line, there are so many options. And then at the bottom I added that all important base layer that we talked about in our structural design. And then I added in the windows and one of the most important bits that we didn't really cover is the detailing above the window. So I added a little windowsill at the bottom and I'm adding a little decoration above it. Both of them are very necessary for these to look good. So I added some staircases along with some slabs and you will just need to experiment with that to see what works. I would say you want it at least one block thick, perhaps 1.5, but maybe don't extend over two and make sure you've got plenty of bits that protrude and you've got some lines in it. It's very easy to do to experiment, but it's also quite easy to make it look a bit off sometimes. You may even sit there for a few minutes and go, this doesn't look right, what am I doing wrong? Absolutely nothing, just keep trying and experimenting until you get the one that fits the build that you're doing. Or if you're replicating it, then it should be fairly simple as it's just a bit of upside down staircases and using the slabs to kind of create that little protrusion out the sides. So as you can see, this is mainly just a repeated pattern, one, two, three on the right, and then two of them on the left. So once you've got that one segment, that's only one sixth of the entire building, you can just replicate it. So all you need to do is get that little bit down, get it looking as you want, and then you can replicate it no problem. Now this sixth is where the door is going to be, so this will always look a bit different. So what I decided to do was some quartz pillars either side of the space where the door's going to be, and it's going to mimic the size of the windows roughly by adding in just a two wide door, and then of course you need a bit of a staircase. Most townhouses in these kind of city style buildings usually have some kind of staircase up to the door that goes over the base layer that we talked about. I made a very simple one with some stone brick walls and some staircases leading up to the door. You can see that the window and the door are roughly in line. And then we just need to decorate it. Most townhouses from those 20th century cities have some sort of window above the door and then they've got a more decorative archway or something similar. Now I decided to go for an archway but then basically put slabs on most layers to kind of give it an ornate feeling and then mixed in the door with normal logs. So the door is quite an important part of it, but there are so many designs I'd love to see what you guys come up with, and I'll indeed show you a few variants on this as well. So we've actually got two main parts of our building complete, the wall being the main bit. And it is as simple as that, that is, is just a front wall, and that's one of the great things about this. Now you may want to actually add in a pavement to your street just to make it seem like it's actually connected to something. Obviously I'm in a flat world, so it's a bit different, and you'll see that I left a little L shape there, that we're going to come back to later. But now it's time to work on the third part of the building, the overhang at the top. Now, this is very similar to the example actually, but I'm going to use a bit more of a better palette and stuff like that. So I've used some of the chiseled stone brick and then interlaced it. So you can see it's already one block over. Now on either side of the concrete, I've actually made it overhang even more. So it looks like it's connected and supported between them. And then an upside down stone brick staircase that runs all the way along to create that final bit 
of overhang. So it is two blocks over from the original wall. Now I've started to create a bit of a structure either side because we're going to add a roof on this one. It wouldn't look quite right if it didn't have one. So this roof is actually very, very simple to do, but in order for it to look right, we need to add a few walls. So the great thing about these kind of buildings is you only need to do the front face because the sides are usually gonna have more houses and the back, you may want to do a back of the house, but even if you look in real life, they were kind of just built for practicality and never for their looks. It's always the front of the building that was made to look really, really impressive. So once you've got a couple of walls in there, and you can make it go as deep as you like, all the way to the back, you can make it 20, 30, 40, up to you. Then you want to go and make a nice archway over those walls, making sure they're always one or two blocks over your roof itself. So it goes up two blocks at a time, one, two, one, two, and then for the final one, it's just a one block flat surface. So if I look quite close up, you can see that the side walls go dip over the top of the roof itself, and they have a bit of shape using some stone brick staircases. And then you can go all the way back as far as you want. I tend to leave these quite thin in that regard, but I didn't actually do any interior for this building at all. So you may want to consider that it's not a wide building. You probably want a bit more space. So for the back of this, I'm basically going to keep it nice and plain. Because the front of the building is the detail part, that's the bit that you're going to see, and there's gonna be houses either side, it's unlikely, unless you've got a full cityscape, that you're going to see this part of the building. And if you put windows there, you'd basically see all the way through to the other side, which is not really what we want. So just to keep it nice and simple, I'm going to leave it blank, but with the basics that we covered earlier. And from this side, you can see what the actual profile of the building looks so that you can see kind of how this works. Now I'm going to go back to this bit that we mentioned earlier. This is actually where there's going to be a little bit of a basement. In real life these buildings basically go three up or three stories tall and then one or maybe even two down as well. They built underground and this was a way of letting in some light. So it's kind of like a front garden but also not. But it also helps that it looks like more of the base layer. So it's one block out from the wall. And then we're going to add an iron fence around it, much like real life. This is very much a London-esque style house. And it's made of cauldrons, anvils, cobblestone wall, and some iron fence to give it some spikiness. And that really helps sort of cement it and bring it round and help give this a bit of composition. And one of the final things to do for this building in particular is of course a chimney. London is famous for its chimneys going out of every building because of course there was no central heating back then. And even now we add chimneys on our buildings in modern life but they don't actually work, they're just for decoration. So. This is actually the same, that it doesn't work, but it does decorate the building quite nicely. So you want a nice and tall chimney with a little bit of detail, much like the separators between the windows. So that is it. That is the first one. But of course, the building on its own is quite nice, but it doesn't really constitute as a realistic street. We're going to need many more of these terraced houses for this to work. So what I'm going to do is replicate this building over two more times and I'm going to show you some variations that you can make on this design in particular that will give you a bit more diversity in your street. And once you've got one house, you can actually reuse it several times, even if you don't change it at all, as long as you mix in some of the other ones. So on this middle house, we're going to make a couple of changes, some very simple ones. We're going to create more of a patio area instead of just a normal archway. So I did mention that the doorway was quite important, and one way to make this look a bit nicer is to have your archway extend over into the street and create a little bit of a roof between the wall and that archway. So again, that was a very normal upside down staircase kind of archway with a few slabs either side. I basically mimicked and imitated what was already on the wall, but I just moved it a few blocks out and then added a roof in between. It doesn't really look that different, but it's enough to set this house apart from the other two. And one thing that I would also recommend that you do is add some dormers on the top of these buildings, especially if they have a roof. This space can look quite flat, it can look 
quite rigid. But if you add in some dormers, especially if they're sort of two or three wide, depending on what your center block is, you might have a one block or a two block center, you want to add in something directly in the middle or two either side, up to you again. And I kind of imitated the very same archway that has the ornate bits of slabs either side to give it some really nice details. So you can really go nuts with the staircases and the slabs to give an ornate feel to these kind of things. And then of course, just connect it up to the roof, add a window in, and don't forget to add a slab on the bottom that acts like a window ledge. That's very, very important. And if you zoom out, you can see that this house has now been truly set apart from the other two. And it doesn't look like these two have just been copied over and over and over again. It really does look like each individual one has its own flavor. Another thing that you can do, which is what we're going to do on the third house, is add in some flower beds or some overhanging flower beds, almost like a balcony. But instead, we're going to add in some plant life. Adding a bit of green and a bit of flowers, as I've said in many videos before, is a great way to add color to your building without having to go nuts on changing your palette. So all I've done here is created a stone brick overhang using some grass in the middle and given it a bit of a ledge to sit on. So it's just half a block to cover up the dirt underneath and make it nice and thick so that it looks like it's really rigid and in place. These 20th century houses really used quite a lot of stone and they looked quite bulky. I absolutely love this style. So using a lot of upside down staircases and slabs, this can look quite complicated, but if you keep experimenting with it and just get it to sit nicely, you could leave it fairly detailed or just very plain, it's up to you. And then I would recommend using the two block high flowers and grass and ferns because they stick above the rest and then you might want to put some flowers in there as well. Admittedly, I did use the small white flowers, which doesn't actually add that much color, but we'll just skip past that. You could put any flowers that you want there at all because any color would work with this very gray and white palette. Also, there are some trap doors that are laid across. They're not tall enough to block the view of the flowers, but they kind of match the whole gray and white thing going on here. And there's a good look at the underside of one of these flower beds and you can see how ornate it could get, but you can also, you know, keep it nice and flat like some of the ones above. And even here near the basement, you could create even smaller flower beds just outside the window and you could do that on all of them. On this particular design, all of them are gonna stretch the whole width of the building and it's even going to go across the door. So instead of having the archway, the flower bed will sit just above the doorway and it's just gonna kind of mold into one. So if you get a good look at the underside here, there's still the archway, it still feels like it's being held up, but the flowers do sort of cut in across. There's a lot of opportunity to experiment here. So if we take a step back and we have a look, this is the ideal situation where you've got the same house three times, but they clearly stand out from one another in some kind of way. And that's really important. Maybe on the first one, there's a tree and you can reuse these houses over and over again. But of course, that's not quite enough. It's gonna be a very, very gray build if our street is just composed of this house. Even if you changed up the palette, it would still look very samey. So what we're going to do is make a few more examples. I did consider putting this video into like a series of making lots of different ones, but I thought why not just do them all now? So this is 17 blocks across. The other one was an even number. This one is an odd number. This will determine whether it's a one block center or a two block center, which will slightly change how this build works out. So as you can see, I've extended the pathway all the way across and I've used smooth sandstone. I've even put in four blocks there on the left where the door is going to be. It kind of helps to plan ahead. And then we're going to build up six blocks using the smooth sandstone. And this is going to be our base layer. Different to the last one, our base layer is actually going to incorporate some windows and some of the door as well. So there's also a bit of a top to it using quartz. Quartz and sandstone, quartz and these uh, gray blocks are all really good combinations. Quartz is a very good one indeed. And then if you use more sandstone, make it 18 higher from the quartz, not from the floor, 18 high from the quartz all the way up. Of course, you can make it one or two blocks higher. It really doesn't matter that much. Now for the base layer in this one, it's going to need a bit more attention than what we did before. So this is one block forward 
forward and it's kind of in line with the rest of the street. All I did was highlight where the door's going to go, where the window is going to go, which is going to be two blocks wide as it typically is on these style buildings, and then I just filled in the space with some staircases. And that created quite a nice effect. And don't forget the window ledge with the quartz slab. The door I have highlighted, but that is about it for that little bit there. So the door is going to go here. It's going to have a little bit of an archway over it. We can come back and detail this properly later on in the video. For now, we want to make sure we've got the structure of this. And this style is going to be very similar to what we've done, but also there's going to be a slight difference as well. So we're going to, again, use the staircases in a flat wall to try and give it some depth. But this time it's going to be a consistent pattern and not just used to separate the windows. So on the left there's two blocks of staircase, then two sand, then staircase, then two sand. And then we're going to place in where the windows are. Now I mentioned that this was 17 wide for a reason. Because I already know exactly where my windows are going to go and how wide they are. So that's kind of something to take into consideration when you make these kind of buildings that you want to know what the width is and where your windows are going to sit because if they have an odd number, you're gonna want to make sure it's got at least a proper center to it. Now, contrary to what we just did where the windows just sit in the wall, we actually have a bit of a framework this time. So we've got a window ledge, which is actually upside down staircases this time, and we've got two quartz pillars either side of our window. This is really going to highlight where the windows are and they're going to sit quite nicely. And then the decoration on the top is similar to what we just did, but I'm gonna go for a slightly different design where they overhang even more and they're even more ornate. So you can see that that covers three blocks in total. You got half at the bottom, then two staircases, then one at the top. So you can go really nuts with these. And that's why these windows need to be so tall. It's because all of these ornate decorations will take up a lot of space. And also it's 17 blocks wide, meaning that there is one block center, meaning that there is a gap between those two window decorations. That's also something very important to, to mention. You don't want those decorations to touch, otherwise it will feel quite strange. You want each window to kind of have its own thing for it. And then replicate that above, and this one's only gonna have a set of four windows because they are very, very tall. They're very big, they're very ornate. So overall, that is it. It's a very simple repeated pattern for the wall, the sand, then the staircase, then the sand, then the staircase, but the windows are what really make this happen. And you can see that it's got a framework with the smooth sandstone either side, the base layer really gives it something to sit on, and now we need to do the third part, which is of course the overhang at the top. This time we're actually going to go for more of an ornate design. I know I've said ornate quite a lot in this video, but it's kind of important. We've got a slab that runs across the top of this and we've got a slab underneath as well on the sides and in the middle because there's a one block center, you're able to do that sort of thing. And there's a line in between, you can see that there's a gap and that gap is just going to make it look a lot nicer and match what we've done with the windows. The slab underneath is to kind of make it look like they're actually connected and supported and not just sitting on top of each other. And then there's quartz slab behind it just to give it a bit more depth and a bit more character and design. And then there's another bit of slab that goes all the way up top. So again, I've got two blocks that overhang into the street and it connects quite nicely to the next door neighbor. That's something you should also consider if the terraced house to your left or right is one block back and your overhang is sitting on nothing, it's not going to look quite right. So for the roof of this one, I have opted to do a roof on this one. It's very similar, but it's just a stone brick with a staircase on the top, then another stone brick with a staircase on the top, all the way up to the top where there's just a cobblestone wall upside down that runs all the way across to the end. And then of course, adding in the chimney afterwards. The chimney is quite an important part. Do not forget it because it does look quite strange without it. It is, it is a very, very nice addition to it. And it's of course made of sandstone as the rest of this building. I think this particular building is my favorite out of all the ones in the realistic street. And I would even say you could replicate this even more, one, two, three, four more times, because these do have a very nice 
segmented repeated pattern. The last one that we're going to do is a red brick building. Now this one is less reminiscent of London and more into the territory of a New York style, but I wanted to really cover a good few designs so that you can make a realistic street of your own making. So what we're going to do is again start with the very first base layer. This time it's sort of halfway between the two. We're going to create some windows in there, but not the doorway. So it's three blocks tall and it just leaves enough space for some very small windows with upside down staircase arches. And you'll see that the slabs and the staircases are really, really important here. So we want an overall minimalist design, but it's the overall effect of the street, which is going to be very nice. So we're going to have a staircase up to this one. We didn't on the last, but this one we will do that. Depends how tall your base layer is. So we've obviously put the door above these two windows on the left on this one. So that's kind of why the staircase has to be there. And then we're gonna go for a red brick building. Doesn't matter what you think about red brick, it does actually make quite a nice palette with the sandstone. Sandstone brick, and stone and quartz and sandstone and quartz as well work really well as palettes. But I'd love to see what you guys come up with for your palettes. Now, 34 blocks up from the end of the sandstone base, which makes it the tallest building in the entire street, but also the thinnest at 14 blocks wide. So you can really sort of go a little to the left or right of whatever sizes I've done. It's completely up to you. You can really work with this experiment, but for the most part, they need to be much taller than they are wide. For the doorway here, I've used nether brick because it fits in quite nicely with the normal brick itself. And it's a very similar design with the staircases and the slabs on the top. Now we need to work out what the repeated design is here and because of the style of this build we're going to try and squeeze in more windows than we did in the other ones but detail them less. So the bigger your windows are the more you want to detail them, the smaller they are the more simple you want to keep them. So we're going to be using more and more staircases again because it gives that little bit of depth without going all the way back or going too far and then we're going to work out exactly where these windows are going to go because it's 14 blocks that makes it a two block center so there's going to be one down the middle and two at the sides of course i already knew exactly where my windows were going to sit so make sure you try and plan out where your windows will go now for this one it's not going to be the same repeated pattern all the way to the top what we're actually going to do is create a halfway point so we're going to create three sets of windows so two at the bottom, three in the middle, then three at the halfway point. And you can see, because these aren't too tall, we haven't actually covered all of the building. We've got maybe just over halfway. So this is slightly different to the other ones in terms of structure because we will just have a halfway point. So I'm gonna fill these in with windows and you can kind of get the idea of where this building is going and how it works. You'll notice that all of them use that staircase type way of detailing and they've all got window ledges and they've all got a little bit of detail above the window even if it is just a bit of polished granite like I have here. But the main point is on this one we're going to create a bit of a separation. If you've got a really tall building and a repeated pattern you might want to try and break it up in some way and what I'm going to do here is try and create a bit of an overhang but then it goes straight back to the building. So essentially try and act like it's going to be the overhang at the top, but make it a slightly smaller perhaps, and try and make sure it's nice and connected like this one. I've had to use staircases in between because obviously it's a two block center, so the block won't sit nicely. You want to make sure it's nice and symmetrical. But instead of just finishing the building there or making it overhang even more, we're just going to go all the way back and continue this building as if it's going to the top itself. You can mess around with the details as much as you like, but the separation bit should be maybe two to three, maybe 2.5. So I'm gonna create a bit of the walls and we're gonna basically continue exactly what we were doing, but there's actually a slight variation on the windows for this half. Again, it's very simple, staircase, brick, staircase, brick, staircase, brick, staircase, staircase, brick, and then that separation line between the two windows. These windows are slightly bigger because they don't have the polished granite, they actually have just an archway made of staircases. But you can see how that simple separation has made this building look a lot more easier to look at. If it was all the same, it might not seem like it's detailed enough. So. 
Finally, the third part of this one, again, is to create the final overhang. And I did use spruce wood for this one. I'm not entirely sure why, but it seemed to fit quite nicely in with the palette. But I'm sure there are many other blocks that would also do the same. You need to kind of imagine what the overall effect is going to be. It's quite an odd combination of sandstone, quartz, brick, and spruce, but I think it works quite well. So this overhang, again, goes two blocks over the edge, but because the building's so tall and it's above its next door neighbor, it doesn't matter that it overhangs even further, but it actually fits in really nicely. Maybe on its own, it might look a bit strange, but in the context of the entire street, it looks absolutely fantastic. I've had a really good time designing all of these streets, but I did actually get some inspiration from a Planet Minecraft project that I found on the internet. So I'm gonna link that down below because whoever it was that made it was absolutely amazing and inspired me to do this building for you today and to teach you how to build in this style. And I'm really hoping that you will go on to make your own buildings and come up with your own designs using these techniques and these styles and i can't wait to see what everybody comes up with this is a fantastic way to build thank you very much for watching and good bye